Did you ever think you'd be holding that in your hand? Uh, no. Um, we prepared for a lot of bad case scenarios. We didn't spend a lot of time thinking about big case scenarios, so, so we weren't. So how does it feel for the good, for the best case scenario? I mean, it's incredible. I mean, we really there were there were some times where we, you know, Glenn and I, when we were debating whether or not we, when when and if we'd be coming back to the U.S. So this is incredible. Do you want to yeah, no, and I also think it's been, it's great because there's a huge debate about what Edward Snowden did and um, the virtues of defying the government in order to bring transparency, and I think this is a really good um, commentary on the nobility of doing that and the bravery of doing that, and regardless of what you think, on the importance of the debate that it, it can trigger. Laura, what does, uh, what is the state of surveillance today to Glenn and Laura for the Progressive Act? I mean, the state, I mean, it's dire. I mean, I mean, not only is there mass surveillance, mass indiscriminate surveillance that's happening on a global level, but it's also, you know, our, our governments are not telling telling us what is happening. So it's, it's a dire situation. I mean, there are some good news. There is some good news. We do see tech, tech companies doing more encryption. We do um, we see individuals taking things into their own hands. Everybody can use encryption, um, and we don't need to wait for our governments to change policies. Glenn, is it worse now or better? Oh, I think it's a lot better. I mean, just the knowledge that people have of the extent to which their privacy is being compromised has revolutionized the way that people protect their communications. Governments around the world are genuinely indignant and are taking serious steps to try and protect the privacy of their citizens' communications. So I think always having an informed debate rather than letting these things lurk in the dark is inherently better. And then on top of that, there are really tangible changes that make it much harder to spy on people as far as it. Yeah, reporting certainly. I mean, we're continuing to do reporting. Actually, uh, two days ago on the Intercept, Jeremy Scahill did one of the most important stories, which is about how the NSA is backdooring SIM cards. So the reporting is ongoing. In terms of, I'm, I don't have intentions to make a follow-up film on this. Has just being involved in this movie made you less paranoid or more paranoid after the movie? <laughs> I mean, when you read tens of thousands of documents about how the government is explicitly trying to convert the internet into a realm of indiscriminate surveillance and is actually quite close to accomplishing that goal, you can't help but feel like you're living within this surveillance box. And it's a really uncomfortable feeling for most people because being surveilled is a really oppressive condition. Um, and then on top of that, you see the government's ability to function completely in the dark in most of what it does. Um, and it also makes you realize that things like the Constitution or legal constraints are really more niceties than they are meaningful limitations. But at the same time, I think the story shows that if you go public um, and shine a light on what they're doing, that actually can provide meaningful limits. So I think it's been pretty emboldening.